So the CZ Scorpion Evo 3 S1 has worked very well. I've had no issues using a variety of ammo. Subsonic hollow points that you can usually be quite finicky in a semi-auto. A lot of ARs that I know of won't run some of the ammo that this thing has run. So quite impressive. But what we'll do, we'll get it back on the table and uh, we'll talk more about this thing. See you back in the warm. Back in the rat cave then with the CZ Scorpion Evo 3 S1 after some serious testing with a variety of ammunition. My conclusion, well, I've used a lot of semi-auto rim fires over the years. Blimey, over the decades. God, that does make me feel old. And I've got to say, this has proved very reliable. I do like its configuration. It worked really well. I had no hiccups whatsoever. I chugged a good few hundred rounds through this wall. Uh, where are we? About 450 rounds, actually. It threw this rifle, no problems whatsoever. No ammo issues, no problems with ejection, nothing. Even when it was getting dirty, it was it was absolutely fine. It really worked well. Even subsonic hollow points, like I said um, at the range there, subsonic hollow points, which can be very very finicky in semi-autos, but this thing seemed to uh, just chew through them. So dead impressed with this little rifle i did do a little bit of long range work but obviously as you can see i've just got a little there uh, i've just got a little aim point dropped on the top there so it weren't really set up for long range i was more about sort of doing a bit of speed steel shooting a bit of practical i say practical style shooting because that's at the end of the day is what this thing is going to be used for you know if you don't like uh, the AR-15 platform, or you just want something a little different. Hang on, I've got an AR-15 here. Stand by. Then here is uh, here is my own uh, Smith & Wesson 1522. If you don't like the AR-15 platform, you want something a little different, then I can highly recommend that. I think that is probably, other than AR-15s that I've used, I think that is the best semi-auto of another platform <laughs> that I have used. Um, I think probably going back, what, 10, good 10, 15 years ago, there was the um, SIG 522 SWAT and they had the match one as well. That at, it, at the time was a brilliant rifle they seem to have i think they've stopped making those now haven't they and then the ones that you do find seem to have sort of evolved i say evolved got old and got issues you know well like we all have as we get old but yeah the sig uh, the sig swat was a real good rifle at the time one of the most reliable um kind of in competition with the smith and wesson 1522 which is quite interesting these things, in my experience, and a lot of other AR-15 rimfire shooters will say that these are one of the most re reliable, God, I'm losing my voice, one of the most reliable semi-auto tutus you can get. But there are loads on the market. I mean, these are just factory ones. I'm not on about sort of all your Gucci, um, I say Guncraft, they're, they're uh, factory anyway, but they're mainly like, WMR, but like your, your Northwest Custom Parts and your Battle Arms and that sort of stuff, um, I, I get that, they're custom rifles, but for a out-of-the-box rifle, then the 1522, 1522 does take some beating for reliability, but I've got to say, this is level pegging with it, this little CZ is, for reliability, so far, so far, so... You know, it'll be interesting to see where these are at in, say, five, ten years' time. You know, when you're starting to get a few second-hand ones on the market, you know, in the, in the second-hand market. 
that have had a lot of hammer. It'll be interesting to see, you know, how they're bearing up. But I would imagine, and I suspect, and I'll forecast that these things will go on and on and on. You've seen the previous video that I did with this where we basically just had a good talk about it on screen and I broke it all down for you. Simple guts inside. I mean, let me let me open. I'm not going to break it open, but after what, 450 rounds, it's still pretty clean in there. That's where I trap my fingers on camera. All right, there's, there's your usual sort of crap that you'll, that you'll get, but a bit of a spray and a wipe out, job done. You know, so pretty, pretty impressive, pretty impressive. Let's just close that. But yes, I'm impressed. It, like I said, it worked well on the range. You've seen the footage. No issues, variety of ammo. Good fun shooter. It was quite cold as well. So sometimes can the temperature affect semi-autos? <laughs> Possibly, but no, really cool. Let's get the Smith off the table because it is all about the CZ. But yes, very impressive. Highly recommended if you want something different other than an AR-15. Then I think something like this will serve you well. Rocking the uh, Aimpoint Micro on there, by the way. Love that. Little red dot, I have several here in the rat cave. I really do love them. Great bits of kit, ideal for a rifle on this. But no, very impressed guys. Ergonomics, even me being a lefty, no problem at all. With that low red dot aim point, I felt that my face and my head and my line of sight was in the perfect position. So it weren't too high, weren't too low. It just, just worked. But no, that is it. That is my conclusion after just under 500 rounds put through the CZ Scorpion Evo 3 S1. In field as well. And a bit of range work. I did do a bit of range work. I'll roll that footage in. Um, still had this aim point on top. Just shooting it at 50 meters. Ah. Uh, I was getting okay groups. I don't know what I've actually done with that target, to be fair. I was mainly functionality testing, but I mean, you drop a decent optic as far as, you know, like a scope, maybe like a Vortex Strike Eagle that fit well with this rifle and it certainly look good. Then I think you can really sort of uh, hone in on the accuracy, but reliability. Absolute thumbs up from the Rackster. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Thanks for watching. That's Rack and Load. See ya.